this is a juicy one. <laughs> it's called How Bipolar Diagnosis Helped Me Find Balance. So the diagnosis happened while I was in the mental health hospital and um, you know I just experienced the manic psychotic episode. Um, so at that time, I wasn't able to find any balance. I was just kind of um, taking every hour by hour and just getting through the day, you know. Um, but in time, when I found a kind of rhythm with my medication, you know, because I came off the lanzapine and went on to lithium, um, I kind of started, I think, to kind of take stock of the idea that the me that was going through life before that episode um, was someone that wasn't balanced. I was someone that was um, overthinking things too much, that was kind of, my life was quite controlled. So I would control my life um, to kind of make it manageable, you know. I was a teacher in a school, so I'd plan everything to the nth degree so that I was ready for that lesson you know all five lessons from that day I was ready and you know my medium term plans my long term plans everything was planned way in advance um, so that there'd be like um, you know no room for you know like taking risks or um, yeah basically so I was always on it so I'd, I'd know how to deal with the situation or something um, and, and so that place is, it's, is kind of difficult to stay on top of all of that. It's, it's very, um, hard work. It's very wearing. It's stressful. Um, it's intense because you're always thinking about the future. Um, or you're thinking about the past, like what did I do wrong in the past that I need to improve now to get better with my planning, to get better with my control, um, to to kind of, yeah. Um, and the other thing that I was terrible at was, <laughs> was um, so for example, there was, there was students at school that would have, um, like one of them had a, a cancer diagnosis, another one was like cutting herself and you know all these kind of teenage things that can come about and you know being in a school, being a teacher you have to help these kids out, you have to be a support and a help to them, you have to kind of talk to their parents, you have to kind of be the one that brings people together and be like the strong one or something <laughs> and and I remember talking to my husband about how these different things made me feel but he said you know Joe he, he said afterwards after the manic episode he said I don't think I realized to what extent things affected you and that was because I wasn't expressing myself in a way that was accurate to how how intense um, that thing made me feel. Um, so if it was like someone just got a, a cancer diagnosis, it was really intense and very upsetting for me, but I just kind of put it to him at the end of the day um, as if it's like, yeah, it's okay, you know, it's sad, but um, it's all right, I can cope with it or whatever. I don't know how I said it. I didn't really talk like that, but um, it's difficult to talk about it in now obviously I'm in the future um yeah so I wasn't I wasn't kind of accurate with my my feelings and my emotions and I didn't really express myself in in a enough and and I think my husband at the time he kind of thought that I was generally just very happy um, and just kind of got on with stuff. Um, he didn't, I don't think he really realised, you know, what difficulties I was going through internally um, because I didn't show that to him. Um, and I was also being bullied at school and I wasn't able to kind of sort that situation out myself. I found that really difficult. 
and I didn't have support at school either to to help with what was going on um, and I was the only textiles teacher and I did have a team but that team was very unsupportive and and then I'd go higher up in the school hierarchy and higher up they weren't supportive and they didn't like my ideas that I had and I don't know I just I had to get out of there and it wasn't the right job for me at that time and I'm glad that I moved on um, but going back to the idea of finding balance is is kind of I suppose having a a deeper awareness of what's really going on on the inside um, and and knowing um, what you need to put into place so that um, you can feel okay on a day-to-day -day basis that you can kind of well now I'm I'm at a place where I don't have to manage my feelings and emotions because I accept what I notice and what comes up and it's there and it's there in my present and whatever I'm feeling it's okay it's not like I have to push that um that sadness down and hide it from someone because oh god forbid I might cry in front of someone else you know so 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 now if I feel sad then I cry you know and if I'm in a place where I feel like maybe it's not particularly socially acceptable I'll I'll go to um, my car or I'll go somewhere where I can have a bit of a tearful moment and just kind of you know let it out basically and not hold on to things um, until they kind of fester and kind of find a deep dark place in your body just to stay for a bit and then come out in a few years time or something um, I, in, an interesting thing that came up um, a week or two ago um, I'd met someone with bipolar and she was taking three kinds of medication and she seemed kind of okay um, she was unsure about whether to take our yoga classes or not and um, I remember after meeting her, after doing the class and everything and having a bit of a chat with her, she knew that I'd had bipolar and I had that diagnosis and that I don't take meds anymore. But there was something there that kind of continued with me. And I remember saying to my business partner, I was like, I, I feel a bit sad and I don't know why. <laughs> and... Um, and so we carried on talking a bit and then on the side of the road there were some chairs. Um, we were in the middle of Toulouse where it was kind of busy, lots of traffic and people going past. And I was like, can we just stop for a moment? And um, we stopped for a moment and I just kind of closed my eyes. He was just like, you know, being patient and waiting for me. And I was just like sat there for a while and just trying to work out what it was that was making me feel sad. And... Um, Oh, something's flashing at me. Um, I've hardly got any time left. <laughs>